Communism Combat welcomes you to a special interaction and chat with film director Hansel Mehta. Uh, we will speak on critical issues of the day, uh, issues like minority rights through films like Shahid, issues like migration from villages to cities through films like City Light. And most importantly, food, food making and food eating, because Hansel Mehta began his career with a food show. Welcome Hansel to Communism Combat's special interview. Thanks so much Mr. Mehta for agreeing to do this uh, with us. Was food also a passion? You did Khana Khazana for seven years. Food has always been a passion. I find food to be most secular. <laughs> so that means food and secularism is a passion. Yeah, I find that to be the most uh, independent space that I can inhabit. You know, I uh, feel uh, one with myself. It's meditative. So you cook and you... I cook. Uh, I, I enjoy cooking sometimes much more than filmmaking. What sort of food do you cook? Cook everything. I'm, uh, I'm right now, I'm in this whole uh, Avadi uh, oh. trip, experimenting a lot with uh, Avadi food. You know, from, from that uh, show you went to cinema almost directly and in cinema the, one of the recurrent themes has been the theme of the migrant. You know, whether it was Dilpia uh, Matliya, uh, yeah, City Light. So what, what is it about that theme, the insider, the outsider, the city? I don't know, you know, uh, I was, uh, when I came to Mumbai, I had, uh, I was born in Bombay. You know, I always say that, so I was born in Bombay. first generation or? No, my grandfather okay. uh, was... So a couple uh, of generations. A couple of generations, my great-grandfather, I believe, mm. was in Bombay. So uh, I've been born in Bombay. I have known the city as Bombay. And uh, I left for a brief, uh, uh, maybe two or three years after I did my engineering, I went to Australia. And when I came back, the riots had happened. This is 92, 93? 92, 93, riots had just gotten over and I came back to a different city. I somehow got the feeling when I saw the films earlier and now that uh, it also had to do with much earlier, the 60s and the 70s, when you had the attack on the Gujaratis, by the Shiv Sena, the attack was, on the South Indians. Unfortunately, you're not born then. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Okay, because I, I believe the Shiv Sena attacked your first film. My second film, oh, Dilpe Matliya. My first film was actually based on another subject which has been close to my heart, which is medical malpractice, negligence. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my recurring theme has mainly been the uh, marginalized, the people that we don't look at, the people that we don't bother about, but who inhabit every space that we uh, live in. So, it's more about the marginalized, you know, always. It, they are at the receiving end uh, most of the time. And uh, it could be because of their own uh, doing in many places. An individual's uh, battle with his own circumstances. But I believe that we don't look at those stories. Uh, and that leads to this lack of empathy. I find this lack of empathy in general, this whole quest for this capitalist, you know, this whole wealth creation. Do you think this uh, lack of empathy has grown with the burgeoning middle class? It has. That's what I came back to a Bombay which, uh, you know, completely, where the lack of empathy was out in the open, I think. You know, before that, it was there, we used to talk in hushed uh, voices. Like, I was a really small, I was very small when the emergency. And I remember that period where uh, people used to talk in living rooms about uh, Mrs. Gandhi, and they were scared, mm -hmm. don't say anything. You know, nobody should yeah, hear it. They were, they, were vended, they were scared that somebody would be spying, somebody would report mm -hmm. anything negative. So, I somehow came back to a similar kind of fear, but it was on a larger level. It was not about one person or a party. It had suddenly become about communities. It had become about classes. What do you think is responsible for that? Was it an accident? I mean, today we are seeing an actual real-life battle between the secular democratic republic, our constitutional values and uh, an attempt at a reconstruction of a different reality? I don't know actually, uh, you know, I am unable to, I am not much of a history uh, buff in that sense. But uh, my belief is that uh, this has always been there. It is, it has come out in the open, it has surfaced. The RSS has mm, been constantly propagating its agenda 
uh, for the last uh, few decades. A hundred years almost. Hundred years, yeah. nearly almost. Almost a century yeah. since they've been propagating uh, their divisive vision of India, and I think uh, now it is out in the open. Uh, you know, somewhere they have succeeded. When you make a film like cinema, how much of it is biographical in terms of the? St you said the migrants are a concern, marginalised are your concern, but in terms of the actual script and actual the scenes that you put in. I mean, I remember reading somewhere that the blackening of the face that happened with Shai. Uh, out, out the character shy outside the courtroom was something that you had experienced. Right. So, how much, how much of the actual depictions are biographical? They are. Uh, I uh, try to, you know, my pain. Uh, the only way to express it, I found blogging of late as a way to express pain. Uh, and uh, cinema, you know, on a much wider. Do the likes scale. over override your hate mail or? Well, uh, actually, the likes override the hate mail, uh, you know, and that is very encouraging. You know, even Shahid, uh, there was an actor who worked in Shahid, so he saw the film. I didn't know him that well, so he worked in the film. He's the inspector who tortures Shahid uh, in the uh, prison. So, yeah, so uh, that actor uh, came to me after he watched the film. After he watched the first cut, I had gathered the entire crew. So he came out and he said, you know, I was a car sevak. Went to, went to Ayodhya. Ayodhya. So I was a Karsevak and uh, I am a Sanghi. But you have uh, forced me to think, to rethink the way I have been perceiving people and communities. And I felt that was a small uh, success. At least I forced somebody to think. I have provoked thought in that person. If you look at Hindi cinema as a whole, not just your films, I uh, mean, uh, we've been trying to look at it historically as well. The, you know, the social, the Muslim social earlier, the token secular characters from A.K. Hangal, the Chacha and this, that. Then you had the famous scene of uh, Dilip Kumar in uh, Ganga Jamna, right. when he dies saying, Hey Ram. And that was a huge debate at the time that should a Muslim actor be allowed to say, Hey Ram, which right. was Gandhi's words when he was killed. Dada, no, Ganga Jal, uh -huh. Dada. Dada, Ganga Jal, no. How has Hindi cinema, Indian cinema handled this issue of diversity, pluralism in your view? Well, uh, see, there was a time, uh, the 50s and the 60s, which were, for me, the most vibrant times. You know, where not only uh, the divide between communities, uh, they dealt with uh, women's issues in a most mature manner. Uh, you had thinkers like Bimal Roy making films. You had Satyajit Ray making films uh, in Bengal. And they dealt with issues with such maturity and with such understanding and empathy, which somehow the rise of Amitabh Bachchan and that whole brand of cinema, the escapist, highly escapist brand of cinema, uh, think I think it died. Took it, it took it away. I think it took it away. It was then the tokenism began that you know you become a coolie and you wear 786, and that's so it re reached the level of tokenism. Amar Akbar Anthony. So it was all very, uh, it was everything was tokenism. And, uh, and now, and now, uh, now I mean you see, uh, it's very dangerous. Uh, you have bhag, bhag milka bhag, which propagates, you know, while uh, celebrating a sports personality, it propagates a certain uh, animosity towards your neighbors. Uh, is this the time or the climate to even bring up something like that? They have to be responsible. They have to be, we are storytellers, we are storytellers, we have to be honest. My honesty has to be towards my story first. And I can tell different types of stories. I can you know, make a sex comedy with the same honesty uh, that I would make uh, a courtroom drama. But uh, that honesty towards my subject is important, but I have to be responsible about uh, the way I depict. Because you have to understand, we live in a very plur pluralistic uh, society. We live in, with an audience which is very diverse. There is one question which has always bothered me when you look at Indian cinema as compared to even neighbouring countries. Look at Khuda Ke, uh, Khuda, Ke Vaas, uh, Khuda Ke Liye or Bol, two excellent films that came out, very brave films that came out of Pakistan. How much 
Khamosh Pani. You're right. I mean, w would it be ever possible for Indian cinema to, uh, commercial cinema, to depict the hate generated in uh, RSS camps, the kind of history that's told, the kind of violence that is encouraged, uh, and the, I mean, I remember that scene from Tamas, uh, which was created such a huge controversy of the uh, ringing of the uh, pole, you know, the cock's neck, yeah, yeah. and that created huge, uh, would it be possible for mainstream cinema to show what happens in the camps of the RSS today? I don't know it's, if it's just uh, depicting the RSS. I think uh, even today, with the RSS ruling, I cannot make a biography, an honest biography of Indira Gandhi. I cannot show the emergency openly. You know, films around the emergency, barring Hazaro Khwaishayasi, which was rose-tinted, which was romantic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is not possible to uh, depict the truth. You know, unfortunately, we have become entertainment machines and not chroniclers of uh, our times. We don't chronicle our times. No, but we are chronicling uh, with a fair degree of honesty and sensitivity the Muslim radicalization. For instance, I mean, not just Shahid, but uh, Fiza, I remember. I know, I find So I think there's, a, there's a desire to look at that aspect, but not look at the majority radicalization. I know. So they, is there a sort of a... Well, even that aspect, uh, I mean, see how they look at it. Uh, you know, Shahid was, uh, although it is my film, it was one example where we looked at it very openly and I was warned 20 times that, you know, this film will never get released, nobody will watch it. I had people, uh, well-wishers, who are very secular, really uh, good, uh, uh, you know, individuals calling me and saying, you know, this film, nothing is going to happen to this film. But Parzania was made. Well, that's what, Parzania was made, but see the trouble it went through. It got into trouble. And so that intolerance amongst, you know, uh, and it is politically motivated, this intolerance. You were just mentioning how difficult Shahid, the making of Shahid was. Uh, it won the national award for direction and for the best actor. Uh, and then it was not was not shown at the, you know, as the it inaugural film. It was shown, film. it was not the inaugural film. As the inaugural film. So the only change and shift between the period been the announcement and that was the change in government in Delhi. Do you see that as a connection? On the well, I saw it as a connection and then I realized that it was, you know, there are things that happen at the lower level. See, and that's what this is, uh, it is symptomatic. This, uh, what they did is symptomatic of the reaction. You know, I'm sure the Prime Minister has many more important things. I'm sure the uh, Information and Broadcasting Minister has many more important things than the opening film. Uh, but somewhere in the ministry that uh, feeling has percolated and it has uh, it is symptomatic of that uh, mindset. But you were one of the film uh, persons from Indian cinema who made a clear-cut appeal to people to vote a certain way. So you would be on the kind of counting list. Yeah, I know. I, and I did that very aware that this would uh, happen, uh, that there would be uh, some sort of a backlash, that there would be, you know, people coming after the work that I do and I really don't care. But uh, it doesn't affect future projects? I don't think so. No. You know, I think I've also proved myself as a storyteller. So I can still continue telling stories. You yourself said that for you, Shahid was very important because it brought you back uh, to the art of filmmaking in a very different way because... So so what, what was so important about Shahid for you? One, uh, for me, the story uh, of Shahid, his journey was very important. You know, as uh, a journey that had to be communicated to the entire world, uh, as a journey that had to reach even the young Muslim youth about uh, anger, uh, redemption and uh, making your fight constructive. And for me, that was uh, a, an inspiring message in his journey. I wanted that uh, story to be told very badly. Today, you mentioned this just before we started the interview that you were again very upset by reading Ashok Singhal's statement. Why were you upset? I, don't, I just feel that, uh, you know, what my, my worst fears are slowly coming through. When this government came in, my fear was that this is going to bring that whole chauvinism out in the open. It is going to inhabit the spaces that we uh, inhabit, uh, you know, housing societies. Uh, they are suddenly going to feel empowered about this uh, divide about vocalizing the divide. Actually, more apart from the divide, it is a majoritarian consciousness. Exactly. So that is why I am repeating a question in a different way. That should not a film, should not a film or several films be made that talk to 
the Hindu majority about how they should be behaving in this country? Well, uh, I uh, hope to find a story like that. Uh, you know, we uh, unfortunately, uh, when whenever we look at uh, Hindu stories, we turn to uh, very safe parts of our uh, mythology. We take the Mahabharata and we take all the safe elements of the Mahabharata. There was D.R. Goyal, uh, a chronicler of the RSS, who was in the Sangh for almost 18 years before he came out and wrote the seminal work. He's no more with us, he died. But there are others like him, academics and others. The, the uh, actor you mentioned who did the role of the policeman who tortured Shahid, who have been through that process and maybe rethinking uh, their priorities. It's, it's that been, would be a story worth telling. It might be. I, I have to find an individual like that. I need to find that uh, change. And I would love to tell a story like that. You know, I, I, I thought Shahid would talk also to the Hindu majority, and which is what it did somewhere. You know, by uh, the, I, that's why I dwelt on his family life. That he he also had a mother, uh, he had brothers, and he went. So what is different? He went. He took his wife to his mother. Wanted his mother's approval before, is which is Indian. which is so typically Indian, and uh, so I wanted it to connect to the larger mass, and it did that. It connected in a big way to many people who uh, did not, who uh, always told me that they said, uh, you know, whatever happens, I am going to vote for Narendra Modi. I like your film, and I believe what you're saying, but I'm voting for progress, and so that in under the garb of progress, this whole majorityism, this chauvinism that is now coming out to the fore is uh, the danger that we have to somehow counter with sensitively made films. How easy or difficult is it to make a film today? For a new filmmaker, what would you say? Uh, it's, it's easier. It's much easier. I made Shahid like a newcomer because nobody was willing to make films. Uh, nobody wanted to back a subject like Shahid. Uh, so I said I will make it in almost no money. So it was made for uh, 85 lakhs. Uh, and that too, by the time I finished shooting the film, we had spent only 30 lakhs. Does being a Gujarati in Bombay, your reaction to what's happening to you have anything to do with anything that you see, hear, say? I'm a Gujarati married to a Muslim. Uh, and uh, you see, uh, I am uh, always pained. I mean, it's happening in my own family. Uh, they feel very, you know, I was removed from my family's WhatsApp group because of uh, my being so vocal. Because the WhatsApp group was full of rhetoric. Today. So there's a certain intoleration of dissent. Of dissent. There's no... And that is the danger. The chauvinism is basically complete intolerance. They cannot handle uh, any kind of dissent. The dissenting voice has no place. Why should a majority which is comfortable in its victory be so worried about dissent? See, they, uh, they're trying to be smart about it, but unfortunately their upbringing does not allow them to be smart. You know, they came in saying that, you know, they will let dissent foster, you cut the supply to the dissenters. But they are unable to handle it. You know, they have traditionally never been able to handle uh, dissent. So I have, when I, mean, I have these uh, self-proclaimed uh, activists, uh, Hindutva fanatics uh, and Modi lovers who just attack me every day on social media, every day. But you have a lot of people who support you and also... Yes, there are people who support me, but they're not... Uh, you see, they are bold. Uh, they have been emboldened by this whole thing. So their language is unparliamentary. Unfortunately, the people who support me. And that is the... Uh, I think one of the disease... Uh, it's one of the diseases that we're facing today. The liberal voice is too passive. It is too... But the, uh, the illiberal voice is also very indecent, abusive, abusive. hatred. And the counter voice is too passive. It is... Uh, so it needs to be aggressive? I think it needs to be loud. No. Last question, sir. The recent decision of the new government in the budget, which is a previous government's decision to make the FTII an institute of national importance, how important will it be for autonomy, finances, funds, filmmaking? It's just... It was a joke. You don't think it's... Complete joke. What, how, uh, what does that uh, status give FTI? Nothing. The same, we will still get the best quality of people out of FTI. They select good people. We get uh, great technicians from FTI. And that is in spite of the government, not because of the government. The government is the only hindrance to that institution becoming uh, an institution on the... Uh, up, you know, that matches up to, say, UCLA or any of the top NYU, any of the top institutes around the world, the government's hindrance. I mean, I, I took a workshop there 
and uh, to get a camera we had to go through six but that might change of no? that might change i they're not bothered the film industry actually doesn't uh, in any radical world entertainment is actually a bad word yeah so what's the next well, the next one i'm again maybe taking a plunge into something riskier riskier than shahid possibly yeah there's there's a story that i've worked on there so two again the marginalized uh, uh, is of course a theme that i'm working on so there's something that deals with article 377 uh and uh, with a professor it was a, the case was out in 2010 he committed suicide professor siras yeah. in amu so it talks about societal attitudes towards gay men it talks about uh, the case uh, that nas foundation you know for delhi for high him, court and then the delhi high court supreme court and it tells you how uh, at least uh, they restored some le- level of dignity because article 377 did not exist so all the future hansel mehta projects that we are likely to see will touch on controversy will touch on nerve in society and be talked about they will they will definitely uh, you know uh, depict something that i see around me i will not make something that is completely uh, nonsensical unless i get paid a lot of money to make some sensible films which you Later. see happening i make a senseless film get a lot of money and then i make a which might happen I don't know. I mean, it's it's not happening. Nobody, fortunately, nobody people take me seriously. Who are the best kind of actors for these kind of films? Well, uh, there is a there are a lot of actors, you know. And the great thing is, among actors, uh, you see a lot of liberal-minded people. You know, just like uh, you know, I believe Dilip Kumar was a very liberal-minded soul. You know, you could see that in the work that he took. He was he was a thinking person. And I see a lot of young uh, talent which has. Uh, it's heart in the right place would there ever be a film made on the life of dilip kumar in the industry i don't i don't think so i'm getting goose flesh as you're talking to it me it would be an incredibly important film well first i think the industry younger generation needs to watch his films that is the first so they're not watching so many of them you know i'm surprised i keep telling actors that you know have you watched uh, devdas and they watch shahrukh khan's devdas they watched <laughs> anurag kashyap's devdi but they have not watched it is a defining piece of work his devdas they have not watched madhumati if you want to want to watch a commercial film and an actor's role in a commercial film watch madhumati you see we have seen om shanti om so our reference is unfortunately so the historiography of cinema is important for the filmmaker for the actor absolutely then isn't fti important well, fti is very important fti is a crucial institution it's just that the government has no place in okay. with the excellence that fti, FTI produces Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.